will end the class little bit early because I have some some work to go. So uh, let's let's consider about the stability. Stability or about stable systems. Whether a system is stable or not, whether a linear time invariant system is stable or not. Uh, <coughs> right? Uh, so, yeah. So, the, 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 the stability corresponds to if if we give a small input to the system, the output should also be small. Okay, so so here, uh, what what do we mean by small? Right, right. So if if I if, if we give a bounded input, that, that meaning an output whose magnitude is not whose magnitude is bounded within some limits, whose magnitude is 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 within some limits then the output should not grow out of bound like the, the output should not diverge right so uh, uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll take two examples as well then small inputs yeah so in a in a stable system small inputs see this this small i'm keeping it in quotes because it's it's a small magnitude like it's what, what do we mean by small inputs the inputs that are small in magnitude it's it's not something huge magnitude uh, an input having huge magnitude it's not an input having huge magnitude so in a stable system small inputs result in outputs that do not diverge say say for for example let's let's take a physical system let's take a physical system which is which, which is a pendulum okay say we are taking a system which is called which is a pendulum just just all of you know the pendulum and, and you must have solved uh, so many problems while preparing for your engineering entrance exams right on based on pendulum uh, and say th this pendulum is initially at rest and and if we give a force if, if we apply a force to it say that that force is is x of t x of t is the input so th this is a force if we give if if we give a apply a small force then this this pendulum gets displaced into some so this displacement let's call this displacement as the output y of t is the angular displacement right so let's call the input force that we apply to the pendulum is, uh, is is x of t and the output is the angular displacement how much it deviates from its initial position of rest is the output and that let's denote it by y of t so we call this system if we apply a small input the output is is, is also within bounded it, it it won't it, it won't go uh, <coughs> won't go all the way uh, towards uh, the, the angle is not 180 degrees or 360 degrees or something it, it will be a small angle if if we apply a small force why because because of gravity and and frictional forces the output is also bounded right uh, small input will result in small output small output and, and and also the 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 output is is within some limits it's it, it, 
it doesn't go unbounded okay so 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 this pendulum is a stable system we can call this as a stable system yes. and uh, let's let's consider so let's let's call this is one example and and let's call consider another example um okay uh, this this is more like an an auto field. okay while pendulum is a is a more realistic example right it's a, a everyone knows pendulum and, and we know it's its characteristics and then it's it's a very believable example and and it's an example for stable systems let's consider an artificial example or, or let's create an artificial example let's consider uh, okay let's let's consider a, a, a bank account in in which you, you you initially deposit okay let's consider a bank account whose whose output can be represented as something like this okay say this is the money this y of n y of n is money in the account at the end of nth month right and and the, the, this is, so if if yn if yn denotes money in the account at the end of nth month yn minus 1 is money in the account at n minus 1 month like the, the the money in the in the previous month right and and let's let's consider xn is the um, amount of so so xn what is xn deposits minus withdrawals so xn is total deposits minus total withdrawals into the account in in nth month right sorry here uh, th there should be something th there is a constant here equal to 1.01 into yn month yeah so so this this constant is crucial so yn is equal to 1.01 into yn minus 1 plus xn so xn is say in, in in that month you have withdrawn some money and you have deposited some money so so this is total of total total deposits or if 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 it is positive you effectively deposited some money if it is negative you have withdrawn some money right so let's let's consider this system so in this system th this is an example of an unstable system l l l let us see why so so yn is equal to 1.01 yn minus 1 plus xn right so this is the money at the end of nth month this is the uh, total amount of deposits minus total amount of withdrawals in the account and this is the money in the previous month so why this 1.01 this is like so 0.01 is is the interest that we earn on on the last month's money interest right so if there is no interest it should be one if there is no interest it should be one whatever whatever deposit is there in the last month it will carry forward for the next month but because of interest the bank gives interest it will become 1.01 into previous month interest so now now assume that assume that x of 0 like when we start the bank account is is some a positive a small positive quantity uh, 
and x of n is equal to 0. For other values of n, right? So in initially we we deposited some money x of zero. So y n is equal to one point not one. So y zero is equal to. So y zero is equal to x zero. Y one is equal to one point not one into y zero. So y2 equal to 1.01 1 .01 into y1, right? That is 1.01 .01 into 1.01 .01 into y0, and 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 so on so forth. So yn is equal to 1.01 .01 into yn minus 1 because xn is zero, right? So you, you, you can see that if there is such a bank account, you just deposit some small amount of money and and the money keep grows, uh, the, 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 the money in the account grows indefinitely, like without any bounds, right? So why YN can essentially become very, very high number. So here, but, but here the input is, is a small positive number for this system. The, the, the input is a small number, but the output is gross without any bound. The output is diverging. So, the output grows without any bound. So, can, can, you, can you put a, put a bound on the output? Like, can you say that yn magnitude of yn will not go beyond some value no we, we we cannot say in this in this case the output grows without any bounds or we can also say diverges so it's an unstable system So with this explanation, with with this with this physical explanation, we can we can now give a formal definition for stability of a system. Okay. So uh, with this explanation, now we can give a definition of the system as something. Okay, let me. So DEFN stands for a definition. A stable a system is stable <coughs> the bounded input if a bounded input. Uses a bounded output. So when I say bounded, it is bounded in its magnitude. We are talking about the bounding. The say uh, so th this is this is also called Vibo stability. May, maybe some of the textbooks they call they use this word. Uh, so you better know this word as well. So this is called Bebo stability. What 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 is Bebo? Bounded input, bounded output. Bounded input, bounded output. Right. Say uh, so. Let's based on this definition. Let's see, uh, say, consider a bounded input. Say, 
let's say x of t is the input and and it is bounded if modulus of x of t is less than some constant b okay so we said that a system is stable if a bounded input produces a bounded output so let's consider a bounded input so generally we are considering inputs as x of t and output as y of t right so uh, let's consider a signal x of t which is bounded in its magnitude so its magnitude will not will will always be less than b so b b is a constant here some constant say we we know that we are applying speed signal and and its amplitude will not go uh, above plus or minus 1 1 microvolt or, or 1 mi 1 millivolt or 1 volt whatever it is so if if it is bounded input we want the system is stable we say that the system is stable if the output y of t is also bounded the the output can be bounded with with some other constant b prime right if if the if, if if the input is bounded between these two limits the output could could be bounded between these two limits or these two limits or anything right so these the, the the output bounding parameter can be some other constant it can be some b prime right so so le, le, let us see what does that mean so we know that output is is given by this convolution equation h of t minus tau x of tau d tau Or it's 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 better to write this in terms of here put x. You can also put here x and here h, right? Yeah. And and what what is its magnitude? Its magnitude is this that is equivalent to this. So magnitude of the output signal is magnitude of this convolution integral. X of t minus tau into h of tau d tau. So, but this is less than or equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of x of t minus tau magnitude of h of tau d tau. Right? You, you, you know this inequality, the complex numbers. Right? x of t and h of t can be complex complex functions so but but we know that this this is less than or equal to b right we we have stated that here so when x of t is bounded with with its magnitude less than Okay, we can we can say less than or equal to b then it will be less than or equal to b into minus infinity to plus infinity mod h of tau theta. right so now we have an equation where magnitude of y of t is less than or equal to b where b is the bounding on input x of t multiplied by integral minus infinity to plus infinity h of tau d tau. Okay. Now, what do we want for the system to be stable? For the system to be stable, it, it, it shouldn't diverge to infinity. It, it shouldn't diverge to use values, whatever. Right? So, here, if if this okay, have you noted down? Then I'll I'll move on to the so if this integral minus infinity to plus infinity mod uh, modulus of h of tau d tau is less than infinity, 
if if it is some constant less than infinity then magnitude of y of t is is definitely less than or equal to some some other p prime right so if minus infinity to plus infinity not h of tau d tau is less than infinity then is less than or equal to p p into p multiplied by some constant that constant is the bounding on h of tau so that gives us y of tau is less than or equal to e prime so if minus infinity to plus infinity mod h of tau d tau is less than infinity then for a bounded input the system produces a bounded output that imply that right so if here here you, you can as well put h of t dt this tau is a dummy parameter here right so that means an lti system is stable if its impulse response if its impulse response h of t is absolutely integrable right so what 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 does this mean whenever you write minus infinity to plus infinity absolute value of some function less than infinity it is called when h of t is absolutely integrable so in in brackets i will write so that 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 means integral minus infinity to plus infinity mod h of t dt is less than so uh yeah so so we have seen what is stability of a system and for an lti system what is the condition for it to be stable so if you are given the impulse response of a of an lti system then you can find whether the whether the system is stable or not by finding the integral of that impulse response by by taking the integral of the absolute value of the impulse response so th th this is all about stability uh, next let's let's briefly revisit the, the the linearity Linearity and then unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if if you have any doubts, uh, you can ask me. You can you can interrupt me now. In fact, at at any time. Okay. So. See, uh, I I know that we we already did linearity in the sense. the 
that's why I call it revisit. We we are we are revisiting the linearity property. So we said uh, a system is linear if it obeys superposition principle. We we said that if if there is a system. So this is input. This is output. And and we say that if x1 of t produces y1 of t as the output. So if we give x1 of t as the input and y1 of t is the output and if x2 of t produces an output equal to y2 of t then what we said was a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t should produce an output a into y1 of t plus b into y2 of t. So this is called superposition principle. Right? So we say that a system is called a linear system if it satisfies this superposition principle or superposition it's it's also called sometimes superposition property yeah i think yeah both both both, both can be used equivalently superposition principle or superposition property so a system is a system is linear if it satisfies the superposition property what is superposition property is if x1 of t gives an output y1 of t and if x2 of t input gives an output y2 of t then see here uh, a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t implies should should give an output a into y1 of t plus b into y2 of t so here a and b or complex valued constants see uh, and and you you should you should know that real is a subset of complex right so i i i call I, I call some C plus J D as a C plus J D is a complex number and, and if I if I put D equal to zero it becomes a real number. Right? So here A and B can be real or complex valued constants or complex valued or real valued constants. So uh, what we should keep in mind is you should not test this property only for real values of A and B. You should also test this property for complex values of A and B. Right? So th this is this is one 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 common mistake some of the students do. Right? Uh, a, a given system might be linear if you substitute only real values here. If you take A and B to be only real values, maybe the system satisfies the superposition principle. But you should test whether the system satisfies superposition principle or not with complex values of A and B. Okay? Be because if, if the question is very tricky, uh, the examiner can give you a question for which in, in which if you give a and b to be real values like real constants then this satisfies this property but if they are complex valued this may not satisfy this property so so you should you should in general so what i should say is sorry so let me Right, that here. 
से लॉग रियल नंबर इज ए इज ए स्पेशल केस ऑफ Say if you if you say real number three, I can write this as three plus j zero, right? So if so complex is is a superset. So real values is a is a subset of complex values. This is all set of real numbers. This set of complex numbers. And and so and and what what I'm trying to say is. Always test the superposition principle. For complex values of constants. A and B and <coughs> sorry and and also for complex valued signals. See the the x of t, x one of t, x two of t, y one of t, y two of t. Can can also be complex, right? Complex valued signals. X one of t, x two of t, y one of t. So th th this is this, uh, this is one point I want to mention, and and another another point that I want to mention is is the, is the following. See this this superposition principle. Yeah, I'm I'm sure you must be knowing this from your basic math courses or or from your circuit analysis course. That uh, so this is super. Sorry. Uh, Superposition is implies additivity plus homogeneity gives you superposition. Okay, so additivity property plus homogeneity property implies superposition. Superposition property. So what do I mean by additivity? Additivity is if x1 of t gives output at y1 of t and if x2 of t gives output y2 of t then x1 of t plus x2 of t should give y1 of t plus y2 of t so th th this is additivity property so if I if I sum the in two input signals, the output will be sum of the two individual outputs. So the, this is additivity property, and a x one of t should give a y one of t. A x one of t should give a y one of t. This is called A homogeneity property. So you can see that the superposition principle, which states that a x one of t plus b x two of t is should should produce an output a y one of t plus b y two of t. This is the superposition principle. 
that meaning superposition principle if if a system obeys super superposition principle that means that the system obeys additivity principle and homogeneity property so the 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 properties of additivity and homogeneity together they result in superposition property right so if if a system satisfies superposition property that means it also satisfies additivity property and it satisfies homogeneity property or in 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 the in the other way if a system satisfies additivity and homogeneity that implies that the system satisfies superposition property so may, may, maybe maybe in some of the questions they say that what happens if a system satisfies additivity property then will it will the system is linear or not no that for the system to be linear it should also it should satisfy both additivity and homogeneity <coughs> right so th th this this is one more small point which which you might find it useful which which helps you not to make mistakes so with that we will we'll solve uh, just uh, one more example on on linearity and then we'll move on to the next topic so uh, let's let's consider this system uh, y of t is equal to sum to x of t plus 3 is this linear okay so th this is the input output relation of a system this is the relation between input and output of a system so is the system linear or not so I'm, i i just stopped i just paused momentarily just for you to solve this problem like as as you can see like it's it's very easy you can solve it in like no time that it is a it is not a linear system right you can discuss with your friends if you have any doubt or or you you you, you apply you apply first x1 of t and see that y1 of t will be 2 x1 of t plus 3 and you apply x2 of t it will be y2 of t will be 2 into x2 of t plus 3 but if you apply x1 of t plus x2 of t it should give you y1 of t plus y2 of t right and 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 that the, that is the that is the additivity property and then you can also test this homogeneity property which is by scaling as this is this is not a not a difficult example i'm leaving it show that it is not a linear system So why I picked up this example is, uh, and, and another mistake some of the students do is, see this this corresponds to see this reminds you of a of a straight line with an intercept, right? Say for example, if if you are given an equation y is equal to two x plus one, or say okay, here it is, three. say 
y is equal to 2x plus 3 is something like this, right? Say this is x and this is y. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3. So, so this is 3. So, this is y is equal to 2x plus 3. So, what, what some of the students do is they think that, okay, here the relation between output and input corresponds to a straight line, uh, sorry, uh, 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 corresponds to a line having some slope and having an intercept. So, so the, the, this is a linear equation, right? But, but the systems, okay, so, so the, the, the relation between input and output is a linear equation. So, the, the system must be a linear system. So, they, they conclude in this way. But, but that, that, that is wrong. You cannot say by, by looking at this, at this kind of, this kind of arguments are wrong. Like, you should strictly apply the superposition principle and see that whether the system is satisfying the superposition principle or not. Then only you should say, if the system satisfies the superposition principle, then you say that the system is linear. Otherwise, you simply say that the system is not linear. But but don't don't make don't make such such arguments, right? So I just want to pick this example just to ensure that. So uh, okay. So I, I I need not write. There's nothing to write much. So what I'm trying to say is that don't give uh, some don't try to adopt some other means to show whether the system is linear or not so, so maybe be careful and apply superposition test to find the linear right yeah so so with that we'll, we'll come to the next topic so this example is, is just to uh, tell you that what kind of mistakes you make when you decide a system when you when you try to decide whether a system is linear So the the next topic is unit step response. Unit step response of an of an LTI system. <coughs> So till now we have seen impulse response of an LTI system, right? So the what 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 do I mean by impulse response? Impulse response of the system is response of the system when the input is a is a unit impulse. So, till now we have seen only impulse response. We have discussed only about impulse response. So, Though, though we, we, we are calling it simply as impulse response, an impulse response is nothing but unit impulse response. It, it should be strictly called unit 
automated impulse response that means we have a system and to that we are giving the unit impulse as the input and the output we are getting is h of t so this this h of t is the impulse response and 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 we 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 are saying that if we know the impulse response then we can say everything about the system right we can say whether the system is causal or not whether the system is stable or not whether the system is having memory or not and and so on and so forth right so now we are we are trying to ask what is what what, what is the unit step response so unit step response is the response of the system to a unit step signal so we, we give a unit step function as the input and and we we want to see its its response as of t so uh, <coughs> remember unit step unit step is, is this function right so it it is zero till time t equal to zero and and then it rises to value one and and this is u of t so u of t is this so let's call the unit step response of an infi of, of of an lta system is s of t so this s of t is nothing but convolution of the input signal with the impulse response of the lta system right so what i am saying is that consider an lti system having its impulse response as as h of t so this is the lti system having its impulse response as h of t we want to give an input u of t which is the unit step function and we want to find its output s of t which is a response to this and and what what i am trying to say is s of t is soft is nothing but input convolved with impulse response right but we know that the convolution is a commutative operation right convolution is commutative operation that means u of t convolved with h of t will give you the same result as h of t convolved with u of t so i can i can also write this as h of t convolved with u of t so that, that means this system is same as giving h of t as the input to an lti system having its impulse response as u of t see i'm 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 claiming that if we give u of t as the input to an lti system having impulse response h of t is equivalent to giving h of t as the input to an lti system having its impulse response as u of t so so s of t same whether you 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 can you can interchange 
your input and the impulse response because of this equation, right? So this is it's very clear. So in, in general, you can interchange the input to a system and its impulse response without affecting the output. In an LTA system, that's always possible, right? So now, now let's let's find out what is u of t. So now let's examine. Examine the LTI system. Having having unit step. So what is U of T? Unit step. Having unit step as its impulses. Right. So now, now we have to find. See, uh, initially we were asked to find u of t given to h of t and s of t. Now we, we are saying that that problem is same as giving h of t as input to u of t and and finding s of t. So now we are asking about let's focus on, on, on this system alone. Let's focus on this system alone. That means what do we mean by a system having its impulse response as u of t? So consider a system having its impulse response as u of t. So that meaning if I give <coughs> an impulse to this system my output will be u of t right so uh, but but u of t is integral minus infinity to t delta of tau t tau right so let me erase this 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 will this will unnecessarily come So now, now what, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find we are trying to find let's examine the LTA system having u of t as its impulse response. That means there is an LTA system. It has if we give an input delta of t, it produces an output u of t. And u of t is nothing but integral of delta of tau d tau, integral from minus infinity to t. Right. This means the LTI system having u of t as its impulse response. acts as an integrator that means it will it will add the input till that point of time something like it right so now we we have answer to our question so we wanted to know what happens if I give input as h of t to the to the system having u of t as as its impulse response? So then then it will be simply minus infinity to t h of tau t tau. Right? See here we have used a trick. 
to solve this problem like here we have interchanged the input and the impulse response of the system to solve this problem okay uh, yeah so so let's 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 go back to what do we want so consider consider a system consider an lti system having its impulse response as h of t so we are considering an an lti system having its impulse response as h of t and we wanted to find its unit step response that means if i give a unit step signal as input to this lti system what is the output we wanted to find so we know that the output s of t is nothing but the input unit step signal u of t convolved with its impulse response h of t right okay. and then we, we we are playing this trick that as u of t convolution with h of t is same as h of t convolution with u of t we interchange this input variable response and now think of a lti system having its impulse response as the unit step signal now we think of an lti system having its impulse response as a unit step signal and to that system we give h of t as the input and try to find what is the output s of t right so to solve this now now we have an we have an lti system having u of t as its impulse response now we want to examine what is that lti system what 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 does that lti system do which has u of t as its impulse response okay when 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 an lti system has got u of t as its impulse response that means if we give delta of t as the input to this you will get u of t but we know that u of t is integral of delta of t so that means this system having u of t as the impulse response simply acts as an integrator so if i give h of t to that system i'll get minus infinity to t h of tau delta so so the unit step response is given by this integral sorry it's not minus infinity minus infinity to t chaff tau so if i give u of t and this is an lti system with impulse response h of t then its output s of t is minus infinity to t h of t so this is another very important uh, property or another yeah another very important property because uh, yeah see d s s of So d s of t by d t is h of t. So, say for example there is a problem and you are given 
the unit step response of a signal is this find the impulse response so we can find the impulse response So that, that's that's what another important problem. So if there is a problem given to you in an exam that the unit step response of an LTI system is given by this signal, find its impulse response. How do you find? So you will simply differentiate the unit step response with respect to T and then find. Then we'll, we'll move on to the last topic for today's class. Uh, we'll move on to the last topic for today's class, which is uh, response to uh, what is that? exponential, yes, response of LDI systems to complex exponential. Response of LTI systems to complex exponentials. So, what we are trying to do is we have an LTI system here and we are trying to give a complex exponential signal P power ST, something like this. So th 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 this is a lower case S, right? Then what is its output? So this this is P power ST, this, this S, S is a lower case S. So, so what? Let's let's find out what 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 is the output. So let's consider let's consider h of t is the impulse response. So I, I call ir. The impulse response consider H of T is the impulse response of the LTI system and let the input is given by e power st where s is a complex constant let's consider h of t is the impulse response of the qti system let e power st this is the input where s is a is a complex This is a complex value. Right? Okay. 
so so we we are considering an lta system having h of t as its impulse response and we are trying to give an exponential signal e power st uh, where s is a complex value number as the input to the system and and we are trying to find the the output The output y of t is h of tau e power s t minus tau e tau minus infinity by c. So this is minus infinity to plus infinity h of tau e power s t e power minus s tau. A simple integral so e power st to minus infinity to plus infinity h of tau e power minus s tau see the uh, interesting thing the output contains the input see the, the input is e power s t right so the output is equivalent to the input multiplied by something else so let's call this as h of s some function of s so so the, the, this is a function of s of course it, it it also depends on the impulse response right so this is e power s t into h of s here we assume that h of s converges that meaning see sometimes this integral may become infinity right so we are not assuming that case right so what 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 we are considering here is this integral this integral is less than infinity here we assume that this h of s is less than infinity maybe maybe i should write that that is much more clear. Here we assume that h of s is less than infinity. Right? <coughs> so, for for an for an LTI system having h of t as the input, and here what 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 is the input? We have e power s t. Then the output is coming out to be e power s t multiplied by some function h of s so whenever the for a system if you give an input signal and if the output is the same signal multiplied by some constant then such a signal is called eigen function of the system and this value is called the eigen value so that's why this is called eigen function and this is called eigen value of the system right so let me put that in in words Hope, hope you have noted down. The, the, this is this is one one very very important property of an LTI system, and this is the reason why all the Fourier transforms and Fourier series are so useful in our analysis of signals and systems. Right? See, if you if you think carefully, we use complex exponentials 
in expressing any signal. In Fourier series and Fourier transforms, what we did was we try to express we 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 try to take any signal arbitrary signal and try to express that as a sum of complex exponentials or sum of sinusoids. See, sinusoid is also a special case of complex exponential, right? So so let me let me write this the signal so. So eigenfunction and eigenvalue. So a signal for which which the system output is a constant times the input Eigen function is called the Eigen function of the system. So, what does this mean? Is if there is a system, and to that system, if you give some input, some input, say, say some some x of t, and if same x of t multiplied by constant, then that particular input x of t is called the eigenfunction of the system. Right. So that meaning, if uh, just just I repeat it once. So if there is a system, and if the input is x of t, and if the output is x, then x of t is called the eigenfunction of the system. And the constant is called the eigenvalue of the system, right? And the constant is called the eigenvalue. So in our case, if we are giving e power st as the input to an LTA system, the output is e power st multiplied by a constant. So the, the signal, this is called eigenfunction. And this is called So this is one of the most important properties of uh, one of the most important facts about LTA systems and exponential systems. So that meaning, if we give as as LTA system satisfies the homogeneity property, if we give uh, an an arbitrary combination of input signals. So if I give the the input as some a1 e power what what should I call S1 T yeah. And 
response of an LDI system to sum of complex exponentials is, is again the output is again sum of complex exponentials but with different scaling factors. So now now connect this with with, with your Fourier transforms or, or Fourier series. In Fourier series or Fourier transforms what did we do? We try to express a signal x of t as a as a sum of complex exponentials, right? As as sum of complex exponentials. Uh, so that's why the the response to that system can be easily expressed because the output is also is also Con, uh, the output also contains the exponentials but with different scaling factors right so if the input x of t any arbitrary signal the input is x of t any arbitrary signal to LTI system such that x of t is see re remember this for a trans Fourier series x of t we used to represent this as k omega t k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity then, then its output y of t y of t is a k e power j k omega t So as, as, as I said, uh, I wanted to leave the class a little bit early. So we are still having 15 minutes of time, but uh, I have some other work to attend today. So we are, let me write that. Complex exponentials. Complex exponential signals are the eigenfunctions are the eigenfunctions for LTI systems. This is this is an important fact that that you should be knowing. Yeah. Right. So I'll I stop my class here today. So we'll meet on coming Tuesday.